Okay, this is the fourth one. Multiple teams, one backlog. Wow, so multiple teams, one backlog. This is like the reverse of the first one, right? Where we said um, one team, multiple backlogs. So what is the catch here? So multiple teams means that you have one project. So one backlog is one project. Everyone is uh, super committed. Again, you have epics, um, you can have issues, why not? But the thing is that you have one backlog, you, you, you no longer see like tags uh, or epics expressing different projects. Everything is just one project. But the, the team is so big that they prefer to work disconnected, like sub teams, right? And so the, uh, this would be, um, i give you an example. So you have a team of 15 people, 15 people, and it's just one project, but you have the team that will do uh, research, uh, user experience and visual design, and will reach to a conclusion where the user story can be developed. Then you have the team that takes that and develops it. And then perhaps you have a team that does testing. Now, the way I just phrased this sounds a bit of a waterfall uh, model, right? Like you have, have some sort of handoffs, but that's only in appearance. You could have a very agile and lean uh, process. It's just the way the different status of the user story are addressed. And instead of just using the backlog for everything and, and, and treating the backlog as the only place where you can actually have these arrangements, you, uh, you use open sprints. Now, this opens this this sprints here. The team one sprint would work um, with. Uh, by the way, with estimates, uh, I'll go just for this one, and you can have different estimates for each story based on their role. So here, you would only estimate the value or the time assigned for that user story for role number one, as long as that user story is in sprint number one. This will be like UX design research. And this becomes effectively um, the backlog for the second team whenever that happens. Again, you could have fully overlapped sprints, like you know the, the, the 15 people basically have two two week sprints and they just have this split, or you could have longer sprints for 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 team one and like smaller sprints for uh, team number two. As long as you have team commitment, you protect the sprint, um, uh, the, the the different statuses of the user story are, are consistent within the sprint and, and the team, this is fine. Um, I just showed you like a uh, very like handoffy mode, but this could also work for just one project where there's different teams are working, um, attacking the problem or the, pro uh, the product from different angles and they are doing everything themselves. Right, but you want to have this burn down, um, tracking everything, um, and again, this is this is still useful. Now here, epics, you would probably go for more for the traditional epic user story. Here, you don't have multiple projects. What you have is epic user story. You have big big stuff, right? Um, here you can see individual progress and all that. By the way, by the way, the epics module in Taiga can be fed by user stories belonging to all the projects. So, you know, just in case you didn't know, we're using here epics uh, uh, within the same project, epics and user stories, but epics don't have that limitation. They can just take uh, user story from other projects. And so you can see and track overall progress in just one project uh, that, you know, keeps track of everything, right? Um, so yeah, you have sp split estimation. You can use split estimation, and and then you have the overall uh, point, you know, burn down point here. Uh, you have three three sprints here that actually could look as one. As long as you know what you're doing, you can interpret this and be useful for you. Um, so this is this is quite tricky. This is this is probably uh, one of the trickiest uh, Scrum setups. Um, this is the multiple teams, one backlog scrum uh, scrum um, mode. 